Up next is Jillian Johnson. She's the West Coast sales manager for Lafour and has, also has several decades of winemaking under her belt as well. She loves winemaking so much that she has her own brand. Uh, and I understand uh, that would mean that she likes winemaking a whole lot. Uh, Jillian's team building attitude makes it a pleasure to work with her. Um, and she's got some great information to share with you today. And we'll be speaking about how to counteract the green character from underripe fruit. And uh, she'll briefly touch on uh, high, high sugar uh, notes, but I think she's uh, primarily focused on on that green, that green veggie character. So, um, Jillian, if you want, go ahead and take it away. A green bell pepper to uh, got my green bell pepper to get me in the mood for the talk. Hang on just a sec. Let me figure out how to screen share. slideshow. Okay. Can everyone see the slides? Uh, you're on the, you're on the, the opposite screen. So switch, uh, you're sharing your notes slide. I'm on the opposite screen. Okay. Hang on. It's hang like on. to have two displays up. Yeah. There we go. Okay, is that better? That's better. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I am Jillian Johnson de Leon. I work for Lafour and I also have my own wine brand. And I've worked with a lot of fruit. I think I've done a little over 20 harvests so far. And I've seen a lot of fruit that comes in not as planned. So we're farmers, as winemakers, we're farmers. We're watching the weather constantly throughout the growing season trying really hard to predict the future and protect our precious crop from all these weather extremes that we're talking about today. And for this talk, I'm really not going to talk about, like Sean said, we're not going to talk about vineyard practices that can mitigate green character. I think we talked a lot about that with, uh, with Mark. We're really going to focus more on what happens when fruits coming in and it's got pyrazines or the fruits coming in and it's got super high bricks. What do I do? And sometimes that happens together. You're going to get sugar loading that happens really early and you haven't achieved phenolic maturity yet. So it's really talking about what is your plan B? I thought uh, Greg Jones said something at the end of his talk that really it could be the title to this presentation. He said, increase adaptive capacity and reduce vulnerability through winemaking. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. Okay, so the changing climate. Of course, we've seen increased heat wave episodes. I think we've had in the North Coast, we've had over 15 different heat wave episodes so far this growing season, which is a very high number. We now have wildfire season starting in the middle of summer with bringing smoke taint issues. And then later in the fall, we see the, the power shutoffs that greatly impact the winemaking process. So we have to figure out, do we want to bring everything in to avoid the smoke, to avoid the, the power shutoff issues? And then it was also brought up these frost events in the fall. Washington was hit very hard in the middle of their red harvest last year, as was Napa. And then Randy talked about in Mendocino. I didn't realize it was so hard, heavy hit in Mendocino. But they're happening too. So it's not just heat. It is frost that we have to think about. And then going to the other coast, I always find it amazing that the winemakers over there deal with, with hurricane season. And hurricane season is starting earlier and earlier now. So modern winemaking, with the trend of this long hang time, we're really not helping ourselves now with, with the changing climate. The study showed that we are now picking later than ever before. And I kind of attribute this to consumer taste preference, but also roping in the wine critics. They got to take a little bit of the blame here for this. So while I don't think we have any chance in the world of changing the consumer palate or the consumer preference where they love big fruit forward red wines and, you know, let's not lie, they love sweetness too. Um, we can actually harvest a little bit earlier and use some tools 
to help increase the fruit forward character, even though we're going to harvest maybe a little earlier, still keep these wines more fruit forward. So we may not be able to completely reverse the trend, but there are tools to help us out. And that's really what we're going to go into. So we're going to go into what, how to work with underripe red fruit. So reducing the green character and then high bricks winemaking. I'm really just going to focus on fermentation security. So developing a plan B. This is a great timeline of the growing season for grapevine development and fruit uh, maturity. I got this from the team at Fruition Sciences. I think they do a really great job of explaining the growing season and how weather affects uh, each stage. So they break it into five different stages here. And for, for the talk today, I'm really focusing on the last two stages where we have sugar load and color accumulation, or phenolic maturity. And what happens when we get a heat wave or a rainstorm or wildfire event or a freeze event or hurricanes during those last two phases that causes the fruit to come in at not optimal maturity. So just a nice visual of, of the great maturity stages. And if you haven't heard of Fruition Sciences, they're a really good um, company to connect with. They're um, collecting vineyard data to better understand growing conditions, but really focusing on, on changing irrigation uh, schedules and helping vineyard managers reduce the amount of water they're using during their irrigation program and still have really good vine health. And they do that by measuring vine water transpiration. So if you haven't heard of them, they're a great resource. Check out fruitionsciences.com and get on their mailing list. Okay, just a quick talk about the green offenders. Really the number one and what we're going to focus on for this talk are the methoxypyrazines, specifically the IBMP. They have a very, very low threshold, two nanograms per liter or two parts per trillion. So very, very potent. I have one right next to me right now and I can smell it just sitting across the desk. Other vegetal or asparagus, canned corn type compounds, those are more sulfur based compounds and they are often derived through an unhealthy fermentation or uh, residual sulfur coming in from the vineyard, uh, but not really the focus of the talk today. And then we also have the hexanol and hexal esters, the cut grass. It's not as common. I guess we do see it in Sauvignon Blanc, but uh, we're not going to cover those today. So really just IBMP, the green bell pepper. Everybody has a different situation, depending on which wine you're at. You have different challenges depending on location. The size of your operation plays a huge role. Um, the style of wines that you're trying to achieve. So think about your situation and whether you fall under the category of proactive, where you're going to make the decision to maybe harvest your fruit earlier in the season to avoid the difficult weather conditions or power shutoffs that are now happening during our, our ripening or harvest season, or whether you'd rather roll with it. You know, Mother Nature can, can bring it on and you'll be ready to react um, to all those different extreme weather situations. But whether you're proactive or reactive, you really do need a plan B. And that's what we're gonna get into now. Okay, number one in plan B, if you're going to bring your fruit in and it has the potential of having some green character, you always want to destem. If you look at the whole entire grape cluster, 50% of the pyrazine is located in that rachis. And these photos are a nice diagram of different stages of, of stem ripening. I love working with Rhone varietals. I like whole cluster, but I don't want to throw in any clusters that look like photo image one. That's going to give nothing but that minty green green character to the wine. So I would like to see something like in, you know, photo four before I would think about doing whole clusters. So bottom line, always destem if you're faced with some underripe green fruit coming in. Then looking just at the berry itself, so not the the rachis involved, but just the berry. Within the berry, 95% of those pyrazines are located in the skin. 
but the anthocyanin, the tannin, and all the other really good flavonoids are also located in the skin. And this is where, as a winemaker, it can get really frustrating because those methoxypyrazines are extracted within 24 hours of fermentation. So you are forced with extracting them basically. Unless you wanna pull the plug and make a rosé, you can go direct to press, avoid extracting the pyrazines and just go the rosé route. That's always, always a possibility, but most of the time, We've grown that fruit, we've farmed it, we've tried our best. It's got a lot of money piled into it. We really do need to make it into a red wine. So you're, you're, you're bringing in that pyrazine and we're gonna find ways to, uh, to mitigate or reduce the perception. The number one, if you have access to thermovinification, that is the best route to go just as a first processing step because it will actually remove the levels of of pyrazine. Studies show up to 67% decrease in the IBMP in red wine through thermovinification. On this spider graph here, you can see the sensory data. The green line is the wine that was treated with, with flash to taunt, and the blue line is the control. And on the, you can see the herbal character that the treated wine is greatly reduced in herbal notes compared to the traditional ferment. Another side benefit of thermovinification, let's say you have a, a heat spike or a rainstorm or something that affects your bricks level and you didn't get to your optimal bricks, just going through the flash to taunt process with uh, you know, removing, removing the flash water, not putting it back, you'll see a one to two bricks increase through the flash to taunt process. So you are going to correct your your bricks as well as get rid of some of that green character. And there are a lot more thermovinification sites available now. They even have a couple small units around California. So it's becoming uh, more, more available for everybody. Now let's say you don't have the option for thermovinification and you have to go the traditional route for maceration and pulling out the positives with the pyrazine. We do recommend using an enzyme treatment on your fruit. The, when you have underripe, um, you know, not phenolically ripe fruit, often the skins can be thicker, which means that they'll have a limited extractability. So in order to get all the anthocyanins and the good flavor precursors out, you really do need to use an enzyme. I recommend, or Lafour recommends using in this case, Lafay's fruit. This is a blend of pectinases that is mostly, it's targeted towards extracting anthocyanins in the flavor compounds and not as much of the, the grape tannin itself. So it will help to avoid extracting too much of those greener skin tannins from the fruit. This is added 30 to 40 grams per 10 at the crusher or your first tank mixing. Okay, another way, another thing to think about is tannin. When you have underripe, or not phenolically ripe fruit, you're gonna have an imbalance of tannin. The chart on the left just shows the evolution of seed tannin and skin tannin through the ripening process. And you see that the gray line, the seed tannin, it significantly drops as, as the berry ripens. And then the skin tannin has a nice slow progression up. So when you're bringing in fruit that's, that's not at optimal um, conditions, you're gonna have a slight imbalance. You'll have a little bit more skin or seed tannin and less skin tannin. So we have a new tannin out, very excited. It's called BR Skin, 100% grape skin tannin. And this would be a great way to offset or bring your tannin profile back into balance. We've shown already in the development and research for this product that it decreases overall astringency and it brings a nice volume and a sweetness to the palate. So that's one option. And there's always the, the winning team, the VR Supra and VR Color. These fermentation tannins have been around for a long time. VR Supra helps to protect um, what you grow all year in the vineyard. In this case, it's not at optimal levels, but you have grown some nice delicate skin tannin that you wanna help preserve. So the VR Supra goes in and it will 
react with the protein in the pulp and save your skin tannin. BR Keller is very rich in anthocyanin. I'm sorry, not rich in anthocyanin. It's rich in catechin that binds with anthocyanin. So it's, it's nice to add in to help boost the catechin levels and preserve and stabilize the anthocyanin that you have in the ripe fruit. So VR Super is added at the crusher and VR Keller is added at the first bricks drop. I usually add it when I'm doing my first nutrient feed. So it's not an extra tank mixing. You can just add it at that time. Another helpful tool, this has been practiced for a long time, the addition of oak chips during fermentation. So just attacking that issue from the start. Using oak chips, it's not going to remove any pyrazine, but it does a great job in masking that green character and bringing more sweetness perception to the fruit. We recommend using something that has, using a chip that has a little bit of a toast on it. So it will give more vanilla um, and highlight more of the red fruits. Um, in our range, we have an alternative oak um, part of our company called Nobile. And in the Nobile range, we have the sweet vanilla that comes in both chips and granular. And then Nobile cherry spice is new to the range and it's, it's a medium to light toast will bring out more of the like blueberry, darker fruits, a little bit of clove and some vanilla as well. Those only come in chips. We recommend doing at least two to three grams per liter at fermentation. You don't have as long of a contact time. So the dosage is a little bit higher than, than we would recommend you know, for regular wine aging. Okay, so also boosting fruit character we've shown in a sensory study where they looked at a lot of different green or wines that had vegetal notes they noticed the wines that had more fruit forward character even though the pyrazine levels were the same amount they had reduced perception of green character because the fruit forward notes helped to mask it or balance it out and yeast strain can have a big impact so when we developed fx10 we did a lot of sensory analysis of the ferments in Bordeaux and you know Bordeaux wines have a reputation for being a little bit on the green side and almost every trial that we did one of the side benefits that we saw we were looking for more mouthfeel enhancement from FX10 which it does do but it also gave the side benefit of masking or reducing the green green character in the Bordeaux wines so FX10 is excellent for helping reduce green character and then RX60 not as well known in our range of yeast, but it's gaining more popularity. It's a really good fermenter. It goes up to, you know, 16% alcohol and it's a super fermentation ester producer. So it gives you a lot of those red fr fruits, the raspberry, the cherry, strawberry, blackberry. So two excellent choices to use if you're trying to reduce that green character in the wine. Pressing. Most of us do this anyways, but just a nice reminder, it's recommended to keep the free run and the light pressing separate from the hard press. Um, it has been shown that it's not always the case, but your hard press can have a higher level of pyrazine in it than the free run. So just a good idea to keep the, your hard press separate and maybe do some heavier treatments on that before it's blended back in or, or used in some other wine. Okay, now we're pressed off, we're at aging. Some tools for aging, Powerly's Rouge. Sean talked about this for the um, working with mildew or mold infected wines. Also true for green character, Powerly's Rouge. It's an autolyzed yeast, yeast preparation that's very rich in HSP12. HSP12 is a heat shock protein that's produced by yeast when they are in extreme temperatures. It helps protect their membranes. So we have Powerly's Rouge also has a beta glu glucanase enzyme in it. And that beta glucanase enzyme will work on your yeast lees or the wine's yeast lees to help increase the rate of autolysis. So you get added HSP12 and nanoproteins from the autolyzed yeast portion of the Powerly's Rouge. And you get the added benefit of the beta glu glucanase enzyme working on your yeast leads to release more of those nanoproteins and HSP12. 
So you see in that spider graph there, the treated wine is in green, Powerly's Rouge treated at, I believe it's around 300 parts per million. And the control is in orange. And on the right-hand side, you see nose vegetal character. There is a nice decrease in the vegetal notes with the Powerly's Rouge treatment. You can add this during ferment, or you can add it after pressing, or you can add it in barrel. There's a lot of flexibility. It does have a yeast portion to it, so there are some TTB guidelines to keep in mind here for timing of addition. Okay, MOX and Alternative Oak, one of the best tools for fighting green character. It's hard to believe, but there's no official research, or at least that Daniel and I could find, showing the quantity reduction of pyrazines, but there's plenty of winemakers firsthand experience out there in MOX working to reduce those green characters in, in wines. Uh, the theory is maybe MOX actually, you know, it goes through and it does reduce or softens the tannin profile. And that lowering of those harsher greener tannins can also reduce the perception of the green character in the wine. So if you really want to speed up the process of masking green character, use alternative oak during aging, either with or without mox. But use a high aromatic chip, something, you know, medium plus or heavy toast to really enhance the fruit, and that will mask the green character. We have a great range of chips, blocks, staves um, to choose from, bar barrel inserts. We have a new website for Nobile too. You can visit nobile-enology.com and please call your technical rep to get more information. We're happy to um, help you set up trials with Nobile. So Mox and Alternative Oak, very, very handy tool. If all the tools that I just talked about, let's say you used you know, a couple of them and you still have this really prominent green character, bell pepper character in your wine, you can use um, nanofiltration to help remove the pyrazine. It's a very similar process to smoke taint removal. It's a double filtration system. The first filtration targets compounds in the 300 to 600 molecular weight. And then that filtrate is passed through a column that's specific for the IBMP and eucalyptol character or compounds. The VA filtration team, they recommend getting starting levels. So doing analysis to really understand where you're at starting out with the green character or with the pyrazine levels. Um, ETS has a panel for about $210 a sample. They say VA filtration says they can remove approximately 15 to 25% of the IBMP with each pass through the filter. Now with each pass through the filter, you do kind of, um, you run the risk of stripping your wine of good flavors as well as the pyrazine. So it's good to maybe try one barrel and do a pre-treatment to see how far you wanna go. Where is um, the balance there of removing the green character, but also preserving the fruit and um, mouthfeel of your wine. The cost for this range somewhere between 45 cents a gallon to a dollar a gallon for treatment. And VL, VA filtration is a great resource. You can reach out to them if this is something that you're interested in. Okay, moving on to high bricks winemaking. Love this topic. So thinking back to the different stages, sugar loading and then phenolic maturity, you can have high bricks, let's say if we have um, a heat wave which causes sugar loading, rapid sugar loading, but you haven't reached phenolic maturity yet. So you can actually have a situation where you have green character and super high bricks. In that case, you want to do follow the protocols for the green character and high bricks winemaking. So with high bricks winemaking, the number one concern is fermentation security. That is the where the most risks will lie. So with stuck fermentations, you have the headache of trying to restart and the costs associated with restarting a stuck fermentation. 
you can have microbial spoilage, which then leads to high VA or other um, really bad off odors that you then have to deal with. So it's really important to just make sure that the fermentation is clean and happy and not worry about you know, other fun little nuances. So number one, when you get the fruit in, and you know it's going to be high bricks, get it into a tank. I recommend destemming, so you can get a really good initial bricks reading. So you want to destem, get a good tank mixing, and even wait a day or two because high bricks fruit usually has a significant amount of raisins, and with raisins they will release their sugar over time into the juice and so the bricks will continue to soak up so it's important to get a really good starting point so wait a day or two and watch as the bricks rises and then make your water calculation based off that number it's good to consider doing a saignée when adding water and then also think about acid you got to add enough acid you know with really ripe fruit the acid levels are tend to be lower so you need to adjust your acid for the fruit itself, but then also remember you're adding a significant volume of water and that water needs to have an acid adjustment as well. It's important to make all these adds before you start fermentation. Fermentation is this, well, it's a magic wand. It will help integrate everything that you're adding so you won't even notice after fermentation. It'll just be integrated and be seamless. Okay, so. When you do a water add, you're also diluting other factors in the must, and tannin gets diluted. And that's why we recommend doing a saigne to bleed some juice off right at, the, right at the start. So you're trying to keep that skin to juice ratio in natural balance. But if your water add is big enough, a, a saigne isn't really going to be enough. You will need to add more tannin to help boost that tannin content after the dilution. Um, two really good ones in our range are Tannin VR Grape, which is very rich in catechin, and Tannin VR Skin, which I already talked about, 100% grape uh, skin tannin. So those two would be really good match to use to offset your water adds in your red ferments. So yeast culture, like I said at the beginning, fermentation, security, is the number one factor, number one concern. So you want to use a yeast strain that has a super high alcohol tolerance, even if you are watering back. It's just, it's a, a they're stronger strains. In our range, that's Actifor V0213. It used to be considered a Bionis strain when that was still a classification. It is a fructose fermenter, so it won't leave you with an imbalance at the end of ferment where you have not much uh, glucose left, but you have fructose. So it will not leave you with a lot of fructose. Its alcohol tolerance is about 18%, has really good strong fermentation kinetics, very clean aromatically, low nitrogen requirements, and it has a wide um, temperature range. It's important to also use a yeast rehydration nutrient, something like Superstart Rouge, to build up those yeast membranes so they can withstand those um, higher alcohol conditions at the end of ferment. And then yeast nutrition. This also gets diluted in the water add. So just I, I recommend even if you're watering back to let's say 14% alcohol, that you want to follow the YAN recommendations for 16% potential alcohol. That's a good way to ensure that you're going to get enough of the vitamins and minerals and yan for the, for the yeast, at, considering the dilution factor. And use a higher amount of organic nutrition, so something like Nutristart Org. Go a little heavier than that than you would on DAP. And then another really good standard practice is to use a must detoxifier that's bioactive. Using that as a standard add at 300 parts per million at around five to eight bricks, that'll just help the yeast stay strong and push on through to the end of fermentation. Other key tips, watch out for fermentation temperature spikes in fermentation. You want to avoid the extremes to keep that yeast culture healthy. Check the potential alcohol during fermentation to ensure your water addition worked. 
those raisin berries, this happens all the time with Zinfandel. You do your water add, those raisin berries then release more sugar into the must and your bricks creeps up again. So you might need a second water addition. And then also just keep in mind that even though you are measuring dry while you're still on skins, you can press out sweet. So you may not be finished once you press out. Uh, build a strong ML culture and use and just get your wines through ML and get them so 2 as quickly as possible. And I think that wraps it up. And just remember, cool. just real quick, remember that you know, the team at Lafour, we love working with you guys. Everybody has a unique situation in their wineries. Not all these tools work for everybody, but we would love to help work with you to develop um, your plan B for this harvest.